They also released pictures of an engine and two pieces of fuselage. It is not specified where those were found. Once again, the FBI stepped in to supervise every aspect of the investigation. They repeatedly denied family members' requests to listen to the cockpit voice recorder. The FBI gave in on April 18, 2002, as long as the victim's relatives didn't talk about it. And for some reason, the last three minutes were unaccounted for. No explanation has been given. Even after Zacharias Masawi's sentencing, the actual cockpit voice recorder has yet to be released. The 9-11 Commission concludes that the military was not informed of Flight 93 until 10.07, minutes after it had crashed. We you know, heard the explosion. Actually, our power had gone off, and then we felt a tremor. We had just gotten up, and the next thing I know, uh, it sounded like a missile came across our house. I mean, they, they were going that fast. It was, it was wow. flying, it was coming f from that direction. I, I had no, I have no idea what it, what, what it was. Oh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't the, the, the aircraft that, that crashed, no. I, it's hard for me to believe that they did not know about that aircraft until 10.07. That's difficult for me to believe. Despite the discussions about military assistance, no one from FAA headquarters requested military assistance regarding United 93 nor did any manager at FAA headquarters pass any of the information it had about United 93 to the military. A year after 9-11, military officials were telling an entirely different story, that Flight 93 was being tracked. In the Pentagon Command Center, there's a report of another hijacked plane, United Airlines Flight 93. We received a report from the FAA that Flight 93 had turned off its transponder, had turned and was now heading towards Washington, D.C. The decision was made to try to go intercept Flight 93. The rules have changed. We could do something about it now. Colonel Bob Marr is in command at the Northeast Air Defense Sector base in Rome, New York. The words that I remember as clear as day was, we will take lives in the air to preserve lives on the ground. Marr orders his air controllers tell the pilots to intercept Flight 93. United Airlines Flight 93 will not be allowed to reach Washington, D.C. The closure time came and went, and nothing had happened. So you can imagine uh, everything was very tense. Flight 93 is about 175 miles north and west of Washington, flying over Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Up above, a fighter jet streaks by. It was about, you know, 10.03 that the fighters reported that Flight 93 had crashed. Eventually, of course, we never fired on any aircraft. When you heard the plane was down without a shot being fired at it, do you remember what you said? We just witnessed an act of heroism. Was Flight 93 downed by hijackers in an open field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania? Or is the truth being withheld from the public? I want to tell you that we are getting word from New York right now that another building has collapsed. I understand that this is a 47-story building. It's, it's Building 7 of the World Trade Center, we understand, has collapsed in New York. Mm. And there you saw a video of it. Uh, now whether, uh, we, don't, we, we don't even know whether this was uh, something that was uh, engineered for safety reasons or it just happened. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. In 1984, construction began on World Trade Center Building 7, a 47-story office building, 570 feet tall. 300 feet away from the North Tower. It opened to the public in 1987 and housed offices for Department of Defense, Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Internal Revenue Service. Building 7 was considered the Central Intelligence Agency's largest station outside of Washington, D.C., and was also the Secret Service's 
biggest field office. Numerous cases would be closed due to its destruction. On June 8, 1999, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani's Office of Emergency Management Command Center on the 23rd floor is opened. The command center on the 23rd floor is bulletproof and bomb resistant with its own air supply and generators. It's linked to city airports, the Coast Guard, and the Pentagon. Computers will soon have detailed blueprints of every major building in New York City, as well as evacuation routes. Hurricanes and heat waves would be handled here, as well as terrorist attacks. Though New York officials say their facility is not impenetrable, they're confident it could handle even the worst crisis imaginable. Deborah Fayerick for CNN, New York. The 50,000 square foot center has reinforced bulletproof and bomb resistant walls, its own air supply and water tank, beds and showers, and three backup generators. It has countless monitors which oversee police and fire department responses, and it is staffed around the clock. Hours before the first plane would strike the World Trade Center, Building 7's alarm system would be placed on test status at 6.47 a.m. for a scheduled period of eight hours. This normally occurs during maintenance, and any fire alarms from the building are disregarded. After the second plane strikes the South Tower, the building's power is shut off and its tenants are evacuated. The major fires in World Trade Center 7 were as follows. On the east face, between floors 11 and 12. On the north face, on floors 7 and 12. On the west face, between floors 29 and 30. Smoke obscures the entire south face of the building. By 3 p.m., Chief Daniel Nigro of the FDNY had set up a collapse zone around Building 7. After 4 p.m., news outlets began reporting that the building had collapsed. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7, in the World Trade Center complex is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. We've got some news just coming in, actually, that the Salomon Brothers building in New York, right in the, uh, the heart of Manhattan, has also collapsed. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Presumably there were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean, there were, I suppose, fears of possible further collapses around the area. That's what you would hope, because this whole downtown area behind me has been completely sealed off and evacuated, apart from the emergency workers. That was done by the mayor, Rudy Giuliani. Jane, I think many of us, when we heard the news, perhaps on the radio earlier today, were uh, completely flabbergasted by it and, and just couldn't un comprehend it. I mean, it, was, it almost sounded too far-fetched. Um, I was wondering what it's felt like for you being in Manhattan. Well, unfortunately, I think we've lost the line with uh, Jane Stanley in Manhattan. Perhaps we can rejoin her and follow that up later. Where did CNN and BBC get their information, especially considering the building was still standing directly behind their reporters? The collapse of the building at 5.20 p.m. would cause speculation as to how it fell. The collapse of the main structure takes place in approximately 6.5 seconds. And the building falls symmetrically into its own footprint, barely damaging the surrounding structures. It will create a pyroclastic cloud that mushrooms down surrounding streets. Initially, it is assumed that the building's diesel tank may have been responsible for the collapse. The Federal Emergency Management Agency's report in 2002 will state that the specifics of the fires in WTC-7 and how they caused the building to collapse remain unknown at this time. FEMA does analyze the collapse of Building 7, but then they say our best hypothesis has only a low probability of occurrence 
this needs further investigation. And I certainly agree with them on that. Then NIST has handed the ball. It's kind of a hot potato. Okay, NIST, you uh, explain the collapse of uh, World Trade Center 7. This rapid, straight down collapse of this uh, 47 story skyscraper. Sadly, by this time, virtually all structural steel from ground zero had been recycled. And no steel was recovered from Building 7 for investigation. As of this date, NIST is still working on their final report. NIST decoupled the study of the collapse of Building 7 from the analysis of the collapse of the tower. So now it's sitting over here. The report on the collapse of Building 7 from NIST is long overdue. We're still waiting for it, uh, hoping they have an explanation. 